Welcome back to Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. Last time, we engaged in a bit of a filler chapter, got some medicine for the abbot, and unfortunately, Mikaya got herself captured. So, now we pick up where we left off and see just what's happened to her. Not really sure why this chapter is called that. Glaive Prison is a kind of intimidating name, though. That's all you're concerned with, and it's pretty much your entire character at this point. Yeah, don't expect a lot of development for anyone new to Radiant Dawn, sadly. Ah, I remember you. Oh, right, yeah, you kind of sacrificed yourself down to 1 HP in the last chapter, so uh, that makes sense. And I wasn't able to get Laura to heal you because she had to arrive. Unintentional gameplay and story integration. So, here for once I'm glad that we have a new protagonist because I dread to think what Aimee would do if she was locked in a cell with Ike. I'm Aimee. My name got changed in the American version of Shadow Dragon for some reason, but uh, yeah, I'm Aimee here. Ah, another familiar face from Path of Radiance. I say we'll be seeing more of those. So remember at the end of Path of Radiance how they said the merchant caravan was going to go to Dayan? This is where they ended up. That doesn't sound good. I'll just take this moment to remind you, this game only got an E10 rating in America, which I find really bizarre. In Australia, it has the same rating as Path of Radiance, so the equivalent of T. How unfortunate. Yeah, that's all you have to say, Laura. Ah, I wish the new characters weren't this bland. But anyway, hello there. Now, before I go into who this character is, I'd like to mention this line in particular. I didn't know this until very recently, but for some reason, this line got changed in the European version from the American version. In the American version, he specifically says this salve is made from olive grass, which we later find out is an item that you can get in the game that raises Lagoo's transform gauges. For some reason, they removed the reference to Olivy Grass in the European version and instead just call it a powerful herbal infusion. If anyone has any idea why they did this, please let me know because it completely escapes me. Well, it's not like we have much other choice in this situation, and it's better than bleeding to death, I guess. Being best friends slash adoptive siblings slash love interests with a thief has its advantages. Ah, uh, that's a lot of people's thoughts on seeing Soth in this game. Should that have been thank you very much? I'm not sure, maybe that was a typo. Anyway, this is Kurth. He's totally not someone we met in Path of Radiance. Yes, on this episode of Undercover Dragon Prince. 
I understand why Aimee didn't recognize him, because she would never have directly seen him in that game. And back to the Crisis music. This is another uh, bit of footage that I saw before this game came out in the early pre-release period. Hey, Nolan Edward! And Leonardo is here too. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I should stop doing that. Leonardo's okay. He's fine, really. I don't really hate the guy. Remember this line, though. This is gonna be important. It's foreshadowing something that will happen in the chapter. Uh-oh, we've got enemies. Quite a few of them, actually. This map can be tricky if you don't approach it the right way. And conveniently, um, they followed the JRPG lore of prisons and left all of our equipment locked up in the same place. Which is also the same staff she had in the last chapter. But, other than Soth, this is our first instance of a Path of Radiance character joining us. I love Mikai's half-closed eyes here. Mikai definitely has a lot of good snark moments. I guess it kind of... It's a running thing for Telia's protagonists. So yeah, more confirmation that the books are all written in ancient tongue. Though, you'd think the giant yellow lightning bolt on the cover would have been a clue that it was thunder magic and not light magic. Those tomes look pretty distinctive. Also, Ileana's about to say something here that doesn't really do her any favours for being a one-note character, but it is admittedly quite a funny line. Yeah, this is just how Ileana is. I still feel like she might have diabetes or some other kind of medical condition. Yeah, this line right here. I, I admit that's a good line. Or they'll just stand there, because that's what they'll do if they're not given any orders. Yep, we've got partner units in this chapter for the first time. Firstly though, let's cover Ileana. Ileana is the first returning character from Path of Readings to get true transfer bonuses. So her starting stats, weapon ranks, and bond supports might be different on your file. I have a whole video on how transfer bonuses work, so I won't explain them here. But for every Path of Readings returning character, I'll be showing their base stats without transfers. As for Ileana herself, she's one of the most controversial characters in this game. I remember back when Radiant Dawn first came out, she was almost unanimously considered terrible. But recently, she's gained a lot of passionate defenders. Ileana has a lot both for and against her. And I'll get the against side out of the way first. Thunder Magic got badly nerfed in Radiant Dawn. It still has the lowest accuracy and highest weight of all the Animatomes, but it now has the lowest might of the three as well. We're talking three might on its lowest ranked tomes. Ouch. The only real thing it has going for it is its crit rate. Secondly, Ileana has one of the worst speed growths in the game, and a horrible speed cap in third tier. It's lower than third tier generals to put things in perspective. Although her second tier speed cap is actually higher than a lot of mages with better speed growths. Yeah, this is a running theme. I don't know what they were thinking when it comes to mage caps in this game. On to the positives though, while her speed growth and caps are terrible, her speed base is not that bad. Even without transfers, she can double quite a few things early on. She also starts with exactly enough strength to not be weighed down by Elf Thunder, and she has a very high strength growth for a maid, so as she levels up, she won't need to worry about weight on pretty much anything. The other main strength that a lot of people defend Ileana for is that due to the way mage types are segregated in this game, Ileana is the only one in the game who can use the SS Thunder Tone. And let's just say there's a certain late game boss who's weak to this spell. So that can be pretty fun. 
The most unique thing about Ileana though is her availability, and this is both a positive and a negative at the same time. Let me explain. Ileana starts out with the Dawn Brigade, but at the end of Part 1, she'll be leaving it and joining the Part 3 party. This gives Ileana some of the best availability of any character in the game. But why is this also a negative? Well, simply the fact that she leaves the Dawn Brigade at the end of Part 1. Something I've alluded to but not fully discussed yet is how the Dawn Brigade, when they return in Part 3, have to deal with some incredibly tough chapters. In order to survive these, they need all the experience they can get during Part 1. And training Ileana means that you're funneling a lot of experience into someone who won't help them during that part. And to many people, this is her biggest downside. Whether you use her or not is up to you, she's certainly not terrible, but you just need to be aware that you might be making things harder for the Dawn Brigade during Part 3 if you do choose to train her. And we have this music again. We also have Aimee here. Seems like she might be a staff user if she could actually fight due to her magic stamp, but she's kind of weak. Keep her out of trouble. And this guy. Your HP is certainly high for just a random pilgrim who's not the dragon at all. Yeah. Also, um... <coughs> yeah. Totally true, that information. So, Kurth is kind of a tank in this chapter. One strategy is to shove him around and use him as a meat shield, which is actually fairly effective. But, annoyingly, you can't change your starting positions in this chapter, which means that Soph is... he starts a little far out from everyone else. Also, there are a lot of thickets here. So yeah, look at these. They give plus 10 evasion and plus 1 defense. And they also mean the enemies can get a little further than you probably expect them to. So this guy, he can actually get all the way up to where Leonardo's standing. Not that guy, though. I guess I can also show, uh, this is an escape chapter. On easy, I believe this is a defeat boss chapter. Or route. In fact, it might be route again. I forget exactly what it is, because I've never actually played this game on the lowest difficulty before. But the boss is not guarding the exit point. The boss is actually right over here. This guy, Burton. Um, so he happens to be related to someone named Tim. Anyway, he has a Wind Edge and this Discipline Scroll. It's not highlighted in red, which means this is not dropped when you kill him. You need to have Soft steal this. And speaking of which, now I can explain Locked Equipment. I was actually going to explain Locked Equipment in the last chapter, but I forgot. But it's relevant here. Any equipment that is locked cannot be stolen, even if it's unequipped. So, to recap, in the Tellius games, thieves can steal weapons in addition to items if they're unequipped, but in this game, they can't steal locked equipment. So because of that, I want to have Soth head down this way, and I didn't have Soth fight in the last chapter. That will change here, trust me, you are going to see Soth fighting things at this point. Alright, this soldier has a javelin, and yeah, he's probably going to get to um, us anyway, so... What I like to do here is to have Soth go here, and plug this gap, and then have Nolan plug the other gap. Soth at this point in the game is kind of a tank. This will definitely change later on, but for now, everything he fights will usually die, and he is at very little risk of dying ever. But he also gets barely any experience from kills, so you might want to watch that. Though you might end up needing to train him later on, because, um, yeah, Soth is, sadly, despite not being that great later in the game, Soth is technically a main character, so he's forced for a lot of the game. So I should put that hand axe even though it's wearing a little thin. And now, yeah, now you can't actually get to where Leonardo is. I guess I'll have Micaiah go around... Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, there is a Javelin there, I'll need to watch out for that, though Micaiah's been getting a little bit defense blessed so far, she can probably handle that Javelin. Instead, she'll just go down here with Soft now. I have the direct option, and it works the same way it does in Path of Radiance. Row means the NPCs do whatever they want, Halt means they stand where they are, Target, you can choose a place on the map for them to move towards, and Avoid means they avoid enemies, which is what they said they were going to do anyway, but yeah. I'm going to have Micaiah wait here, mainly because I want to show off how the direct system has changed since the last game. Now also, something to remember is that these archers, they can shoot you over this wall. Notice how this wall, I don't know if you can really see it here, but the wall has columns with gaps between them, which means, like I explained last chapter, it's a wall you can shoot through. 
Now, I usually like uh, Edward to go and fight this guy. The Steel Axe is going to hurt him quite a lot, but... Oh, wow! Exactly enough damage to kill. Nice. This doesn't always happen. It kind of depends on how lucky you get with Edward's uh, growths. In this case, the energy drop probably helps us uh, too. That gives me a door key. There are quite a few enemies down this side, so obviously don't want Edward to rush them all alone. I like to actually send Iliana down this side too sometimes. And Laura, Wool, I mean the fighting will be fiercest down here. Also, there is a reason why Laura needs to head down this way, so I definitely want her to go here. And I'm not going to move Leonardo yet, because that will end my turn. Something that I want to show off, and something that I think is a great improvement over Path of Radiance, you can still issue orders to NPCs even after you've moved your main lord. So you can still access their direct menu, and we can tell these two NPCs to target there. Unfortunately, Mikai doesn't have any dialogue for doing that, because... Yeah, this game's not that great on developing characters. So, something to mention is, it's not a game over if either of these two die, they just retreat. But they're both worth 100 bonus experience if they escape the map. So, I'm going to want to have them move to the escape points. There's also the fact that, like I said, Kurth is pretty much a tank. And as I said earlier, shoving him into range of enemies is a pretty good tactic. Did not expect you to double that guy, but he does have a steel axe, so he's being laid down quite a bit. You know, you doubling that guy might be a bad thing in the long run. Okay, yeah, that is a sword armor. So, armor knights in this game are divided into different weapon types, just like the cavaliers were in Path of Radiance, and just like armor knights were in general in Fire Emblem 4. So, we have sword armor, axe armor, lance armor, no bow armor though, like there was in FE4. So, we have a batch of reinforcements coming here, including this guy. Huh. An enemy with a portrait. What does that mean? Add to the fact that, in the cutscene for this chapter, they said that a Betignon soldier led everyone in the back way and said if you're here to see Laura, follow me. I wonder what that implies. Totally being subtle here. So, Aaron will actually fight you, but he will usually do it with a javelin, so you don't need to worry too much about him suiciding himself. You might need to worry a little bit about him attacking Makaya though, although his base stats aren't all that great for this point in the game. Soft support really helps in giving Makaya just enough damage to one KO armor knights. And also cavalry, which the boss just so happens to be. Take a guess as to who I'm going to use to kill the boss in this chapter. Now I'm remembering my hard mode playthrough of this chapter. Yeah, that was... that was... that, that did not go smoothly at all. Let's just say really didn't go smoothly. And as you can see here, Ileana is the same affinity as the map. So... Okay, if I move Ileana there, there is a possibility she could she could crit this archer and then get attacked by two enemies and die. So, maybe it's safer to have Edward go there. Haven't actually mentioned uh, it yet, but Edward's uh, name was Eddie in the Japanese version, which I guess they changed because they thought that sounded more like a nickname than an actual name. Uh, let me just see. For some reason, this guy just doesn't tend to move. But yeah, as I was saying before, um, I'm remembering my attempt at this on hard mode, and uh, this took a few tries in that mode. It really took a few tries. It was kind of painful, actually. I suppose I could test if Aaron has Mathis Syndrome or not, but here's the thing. Mathis Syndrome, for the most part, doesn't exist in this game. 18 attack versus exactly enough to kill you. Again, I don't know if that guy moves or not, but I don't want to risk it. I think I'll just have soft advance one space. Okay, I'm doing 10. Means I'm probably not going to kill this guy. Definitely not going to kill this guy. Definitely, definitely not going to kill this guy. Yeah, let's just try and get rid of a few of these enemies. I really hope that Aaron doesn't attack Nolan, because that would be dumb. Oh, I didn't double that guy. Kind of weird, but I'll take it. 
Don't feel bad if Soth gets a lot of experience early on. You'll need to be using him a lot, and experience will help him out later in the game. Even though later on he's not that great, but he still helps sometimes. Okay, you're dead. And that's exactly what I hope you do. Which is good. Yeah, Aaron is kind of pathetic. On hard mode, his stats compared to the other enemies become just blatantly obvious. Uh, it's really sad just how little he can do damage to enemies on that mode. Right, this could be a problem. Thankfully, these thickets here are slowing down Burton a lot. Don't know if I've mentioned it yet, but, um... Yeah, I kind of want to get a little bit lucky here. And I actually don't want to get myself into Wrath, because that would be bad. Yeah, you can't actually shoot over that door. On hard mode, I admit I just totaled this man. And also the drum beat in the soundtrack just sounded like a thumping heartbeat on hard mode to me. Which was kind of, um... Yeah, kind of terrifying. So let's go ahead and do what was very heavily foreshadowed. The recruitment theme is the same as it was in Path of Radiance. It's remixed a little bit, but I'm glad this uh, it's still the same song, because this is amazing. I love this song so much. And that's the only backstory you'll ever be getting on this guy. I really wish these two had supports. They really could have benefited from supports, but uh, sadly, this game was not kind to new characters. And, uh, yeah, Aaron's joined us. I'll just heal for a bit here. And show off his stance. Aaron is one of the few characters in the Dawn Brigade who kind of wishes they were in a different class. He's pretty much a soldier with the growths of a general. Before I talk about that, though, Aaron has one major, major weakness, and that's that his base stats are pretty awful. This isn't so noticeable on easy, but on the higher difficulties he can have a lot of trouble gaining experience early on, especially hard mode. Aaron is another character who on hard is basically useless, as you will not be able to get him kills, and thus get him off the ground on that mode. But on normal I find training him isn't that hard. It takes a bit of babying early on, but he'll eventually grow into an amazing tank. Essentially a general with one more movement, but being locked into lances. Aaron is also someone who really takes advantage of the way bonus experience works in this game, because he'll cap strength, skill and defense very quickly, which means you can use bonus experience to easily cap his speed. Aaron is definitely far from the best character in this game, but I think he's far from the worst in the Dawn Brigade either. And this might be just me, because I know that many people don't share my opinion, most people completely ignore this guy, but I find that training him, at least on the lower difficulties, can help the Dawn Brigade in Part 3. They have a serious shortage of tanks after all. On hard though, I really wouldn't bother. Aaron is not that great at actually killing things at this point in the game, but I kind of like for him to try, because as I said in the bio, he may not be the best character in the world, but I still think that he helps the Dawn Brigade later on. So, I like to train him, uh, if only for that. 16 damage, and I think 14. We've got already how much damage you do. 8. 8, 16, 24, that's exactly enough. Just need to make sure that Aaron doesn't end up getting mobbed. But this should work pretty well. I normally have to tank a lot more with Nolan here. 
but I guess it's because I'm used to hard mode. There are going to be reinforcements in this chapter, by the way, so just remember that. And Aaron looks just like a generic soldier, except, um, with different coloured armour. His third tier outfit looks very cool, though. Should also mention that his uh, third tier class is one that had its name changed in the European version for no reason. Although, admittedly, the American version sometimes called the class by its European name anyway, so maybe they thought there was an oversight they were fixing. Yeah, pretty sure nothing can attack Laura here. We should be good. Yeah, notice how the hit rates have suddenly changed in my favor? That's because Biorhythm. Yeah, I hate Biorhythm in this game. Adds way too much extra. What the? I'm very confused. I've said it many times, but sometimes I just do not get the AI in Fire Emblem. Alright, we need to be careful of you, though, because your stats are actually kind of decent. I mean, you're no match for Soft, but still, your stats aren't, um... Anything to laugh at. Ten damage. So I could go for that, but... Yeah, see, as you can see here, that guy is in up, up by a rhythm, and Nolan is in down by a rhythm, so my hit rate is down. Because, of course it is. And I don't think I can actually use Edward to kill this guy, because either I use a Vulnerary, this guy attacks me in the enemy phase, dies, then the other archer attacks Edward and then Edward dies. Uh, or I go ahead and attack now, and then if Edward misses, he dies. So, either way, there's a chance of Edward dying, which is a chance I don't want to take, so let's actually have you... Hmm. Might actually like to have Laura heal you. Then maybe I should save your move to heal someone who needs it more, but oh well, I guess I'll heal you for now. Don't you just hate it when someone hits 99 experience? I mean, I could go do that and go for the 74, but if that doesn't work, is there anyone who can rescue Edward? What's his weight? His weight is 7, and you're also 7. And yeah, can't rescue. And you can't rescue either. Yeah, maybe it's for the best if I don't have Edward do that, and instead I use... Yeah, Leonardo can rescue Ileana, so if Ileana somehow misses here, it's probably going to be fine. So we can actually see Ileana fight for once. Her outfit's overall pretty similar to the way that it looked in Path of Radiance, but good news is that she does not become a Khalil Palette Swap on promotion this time. Which is news I'll definitely take. I really don't like my hit rate here, but I kind of want Aaron to get the kill, but also not going to the boss of range. Well, you hit, which is good. And now I can get rid of you with Aaron. And I do sometimes like to lure the boss with Soth, just because I need him to steal the boss's weapon. Although... Need to make sure that Mikai is on hand too. Because I need her to completely nuke the boss after we're done, so. Your stupid unit tag is getting in the way of where you can go. Okay, so it's that space right there. There. Which means I have no choice but you being in the thicket. Definitely don't like that, but. And these guys usually don't attack you unless you attack them first. I think I'll just go here, just do the bare minimum for luring you. Pretty sure those armors don't move, but I might end up eating my words, although I do know that there are reinforcements that spawn from here. But they're very easy to choke point off.
Okay, here comes the literal cavalry. And here we see how wind edges in the hands of enemies with not that high skill stats are pretty terrible because, yeah, their accuracy sucks. Take 17 damage. Should be fine. Iliana does decent damage to a lot of the enemies here, but Thunder Magic did get pretty horribly nerfed since Path of Radiance. Okay, that's a Steel Lance, that is a... Yeah, you have a Hand Axe, so I'll need to be careful of you. And yeah, there are Heal Hedges uh, in this game as well, uh, just like Path of Radiance. Okay, let me just check this. Thanny does one less damage, even in Soul Strange, and also, yeah! Makai gets doubled by only the boss of Chapter 3. That should tell you something. Aaron's getting double too, but um, all I need is one damage on you, and then Makaya can finish the job. And she has a 100% hit rate, so yeah, one damage. Don't exactly want the armors to go for Aaron though. I go down there. Okay, looks like you can reach. Again, stupid unit tag is kind of in the way. Admittedly, your hit rate is also very low. But if worse comes to worse, Nolan might need to rescue you. Okay, good, you actually hit. That's all I needed. Hoping for a double dodge there, or double block in this case. Okay, step two. Yoink! That's a skill scroll, and uh, yeah, discipline is actually a real skill in this game, not just uh, something for the prologue. You'll see what discipline does once we get to the base, which will actually be next chapter. And now we can just nuke this guy. About that, uh, before the might of Thanny, cavalry are literally dust. Also, first critical from Makaya, nice. So that was... This guy is beyond dust now. He got disintegrated into microscopic particles. The mage critical animations in this game are really good overall, and actually this is not bad speed on Makaya. Really, this is kind of odd stats for Nakaya, honestly. Still, 10 speed is not good by any stretch of the imagination at this point in the game, but, uh... So you can, yeah, you can get all the way in front of him. But I'm pretty sure that only one of you can actually attack Aaron. And yeah, you're not going to be doubling because your steel sword weighs you down too much. So... Hopefully Aaron is fine where he is, although I could just move Nolan down here and block Aaron off entirely, which is something that, you know what, I will probably do. I would like to... Sok doesn't even have any healing items. I, I don't want to keep wasting this vulnerary, but I guess I have a few of them more now that Aaron's joined. I'd kind of like to use an herb on Nolan, which is what I'm going to be calling them now. Uh, let's... but let's just go ahead and do this, just in case. I'm probably being totally paranoid here. Nolan is almost certainly fine. I just don't want to take any chances. Now, I actually need to get Laura away from the start of the map. Because there will soon be reinforcements. Also, if Laura gains HP here, we might see an effect of the... Yes, we will. We'll be seeing an effect of the heal staff next turn. Oh, yes, and just like Path of Radiance, you can try and break doors. This door, I believe, has... Yeah, it's got 30 HP. So yeah, doors count as, a, as an obstacle with zero defense. That's tempting, and I don't think anything else can attack him from range, not even you. So... I probably should just snipe you with Edward. Wind Edges is so cool. Again, I love Wind Edges. I wish more games had things like these. 
I think the only things in later Fire Emblem games that are remotely close to Wind Edges are, like, some of the joke weapons. And I really should have equipped the Hand Axe. Oh well. I also really like how Arvanites look in this game. Ah, uh, you know I should have known you'd do that. Typical AI, prioritizing attacking people who can't counter, which actually leads me to something that I want to mention. Uh, so there's a really amazing speedrun of Radiant Dawn at AGDQ, I really should have put the hand axe on Nolan, at, at uh, AGDQ by Grim Page. And I watched that speedrun about four times now. It is three hours long, so you'll need a lot of time on your hands to do it. But if you ever have three hours to spare, I'd recommend watching it, because um, it is definitely um, a fun thing to watch. And in the speedrun of this chapter, one of my favourite uh, things that they said, Nolan's magic is actually not that bad, so that's not a particularly weird level up. And magic does have a decent use on physical units. Also, yeah, equipping certain staffs gives you effects, so the heal staff, I believe, restores 10 HP at the start of your turns. The downside of equipping staffs is that you're forced to equip a staff if you so much as, like, heal with it slightly. Um... Okay. One damage off. Of course I would be. But yeah, you're forced to equip a staff on the enemy phase if you heal with it during the player phase. Should I null on that guy, or should I instead just soft him? Yeah, let's just go ahead and soft this guy. Mikaya is going to blast the... Hand Axe Armor Knight. But anyway, what I was saying is one of my favourite um, things they said in that speedrun was that uh, at the beginning of this chapter, so yeah, Aaron's spawn point on on normal mode slash um, English easy mode is around here. It's very different, and I think it's so they can give you a tutorial on how to recruit characters. But he also spawns with a couple of soldiers, and uh, this leads to, again, one of my favourite things... Um, from that speedrun was um, them pointing out how uh, to quote them exactly. So this soldier here can one-shot Laura, but because she can technically counter-attack with her staff, the AI prioritizes attacking the NPC who can't counter. I love that, just typical Fire Emblem with AI stupidity at its finest. I mean, they usually prioritize kills above anything else, but in this case it was just like, Oh no, no, let's just go for the one who can't counter because, oh no, she could hit me on the head with her staff! <laughs> That's gonna do so much damage! Yeah, staff counterattacks were a cool idea, but in practice, I really don't see why they implemented them. Um, I mean, admittedly, it's very funny to have someone get killed by a staff counterattack, but, um, really comedy value is the only thing they're good for. Okay. Actually, I don't like the idea of Nolan getting hit by that uh, steel sword Myrmidon. But I don't think there's any way I can prevent him from being attacked by it. And Aaron's HP is a little low at this point to really be thinking about tanking. That's the thing with Aaron, he is supposed to be a tank, but it takes a while for him to get off the ground, thanks to, um... Thanks to... just, um... Like, his starting HP not being that high. And his starting defense being not that high. And, like, let's be honest, his starting everything being not that high, but... Oh, you can't even reach Edward from here. <laughs> Guess you'll go that way because the other path has sacrifice, I guess, for healing. I'll get the NPCs to move um later. Sorry, I'm just I'm I'm kind of dumbfounded because I think you could have attacked Micaiah. Let me just check. Uh pretty sure you could have gone for Micaiah. I really don't see why you didn't. Yeah, maybe I've just been getting defense bless and that soldier wouldn't have killed her. Well, you're actually moving at least. And what actually worries me about- Oh, I'm not worried. If this guy crits, I'm fine. 
Yeah, the plus five critical on all Myrmidons can get a bit problematic for uh, enemies. And uh, yeah, here are the reinforcements. So we need to get moving right now. I will probably not be fighting all the reinforcements on this map. Well, let's snipe you. I'd like Aaron to get one level up here. Because once he gets going, he does become a pretty decent tank, and then he can get a good amount of experience through trick pointing. That was a bit atypical of a level up from you, but I guess I'll take it. He really needs strength, HP, and defense early on, though. Now, there are a lot of enemies down here who will be provoked into moving. This guy obviously will stay on his escape point, and he does have a longbow, but I'll be discussing the longbow later because it's actually really not that powerful. And yeah, speaking of powerful, here's how Fanny is actually pretty useful. It's the one situation where Makai is actually decent in combat. Being able to relatively consistently one-shot most cavaliers and armors at this point is definitely not something to be underestimated. Which is why I think that Nikaya, while she's certainly not good, she's far from the worst lord in the series. <clears throat> and she at least has staff utility on promotion, which is something that not a lot of lords have. Yeah, I do admit that as much as I like Lin, and as much as Lin tends to get incredibly RNG blessed in most of my playthroughs, and I do mean incredibly RNG blessed, um, yeah, I admit that she's probably not the best lord overall. Can I? Yes, I can double you with the steel sword. Now, please don't 2% critical me. I shouldn't have said that. I really shouldn't have said that. Thank you for not confirming my worst fears. Okay, once Edward starts doubling things with steel weapons, that's a lot better. But he probably only doubled because that guy had a, um, uh, a steel sword himself. Okay, now, as long as Edward fights just that axe user, he should be okay. I really wish I had a dancer to make him, um, to give him, uh, more movement. But anyway, gonna go ahead and heal Eddie here, and then I'm gonna send the NPCs forward. Yeah, okay, that's Steel Axe, 24 attack power versus Ivy's 6 defense. That's. She's probably okay. Uh, she, she's definitely okay. But I do need to get Ileana and Leonardo out of here. And I also need to. Target, and let's just target you there for now. The good news is, if you don't like your target spot, you can go to direct again. Seriously, that's actually one of my favourite improvements from Path of Radiance. I really wish they let you do that in that game. Yeah, Soth's just gonna hit that forward. He could probably start on luring the enemies by luring this armor in, because I don't want Edward fighting that armor. Yeah, those two definitely need to get moving. Ow. Okay, thankfully she didn't get doubled. And it, it doesn't matter if any of the... Like like I said, it doesn't matter if any of the NPCs quote-unquote die, but I want to keep them alive because, um... Bonus experience. They're actually worth quite a lot of it. Speaking of bonus experience, this chapter does give you extra bonus experience for... You know, maybe you shouldn't have crit there, because if that guy had hit you, he might have put you in wrath. Yeah, this chapter does actually give bonus experience for everyone who escapes, so you want to have everyone escape here, not just Micaiah. That is almost a perfect level up by Edward standards, although he likes a bit of luck too, because that lets him dodge uh, a bit later on. So that's not bad. And, okay, good, good that Laura can just get in there. What isn't good, however, is that so. Um... Like that, and uh, you have 14 speed, and uh, yeah, you probably won't double. Oh no. Okay, new plan. Oh, except Ivy moves first. So, what I want to happen is I want Kurth Naga to. is I want Kurth to go up here and block off this point and just choke point these NPCs, but uh, the problem is that, like I said, Ivy moves first, and. Uh, 
yeah, she'll probably just go and die. Or, I could kill one of them now. So, 6 damage from Leonardo, plus 15... That's 21, that's not enough. But, hopefully... 15 and... plus 8. That should be enough. This is probably my only hope, but... Or 13... No, 13... 13 plus 8 is exactly enough, isn't it? As I've said many times, I was not exactly the best at maths in, um, yeah, that's exactly enough, in high school, but... I did do extension 1 maths. Mostly because it scaled well for marking purposes. Okay, good, yeah, the archer can't reach behind me anyway. Leonardo, you need to hit here. As another archer would say, please hit. But you did, which is good. And the archer has less of a chance of critting either of us, so I think we're safe here. These two did a pretty decent job, but they're going to need to um, keep moving because of... Um, we need to get everyone to escape, and there are going to be more reinforcements. And that armor didn't move, I kind of thought he wouldn't. Yeah, there are going to be some good, like, reinforcements for experience to fight here, but I kind of want to escape too. Watch out for this guy versus Micaiah. His iron longbow is kind of powerful. So, yeah, longbows are divided into iron, steel, and silver now. That's not the main thing that makes archers a lot better in this game than they are in other games, but um, it does make archers decent. The real reason why archers and, well, specifically snipers are so good, you'll see that later. Trust me, you'll really see that later. These are the reinforcements I was talking about that are easy to choke point. All you need to do is just stuff Nolan here, and these reinforcements are no threat to you at all. So... Like I said, easy to choke point. And why am I attacking? Actually, yeah, I probably should attack you from range, but anyway. A lot of people really wanted me to use Ileana in this playthrough. I won't be, mostly because I didn't give her transfer bonuses and path of radiance, but if you want to, go ahead. As I said in her bio, though, her main problem is that the Dawn Brigade desperately needs their decent fighters to be trained by the time of part three, and... And Ileana will not be with the Dawn Brigade during Part 3, so you're investing a lot of experience in a character who won't help the Dawn Brigade during their hardest chapters. So, that's partly why training Ileana might not be the best decision in the world. Now let's just have them shuffle a little bit further forward. Let's make it so I have to worry about Aimee a little bit less. Because, like, as much as she, she was a creep towards Ike, I really don't want to see her get, well, not die, but get hurt here. So this is a preview of how much damage this guy does to Micaiah, 15. If you didn't get lucky with Micaiah's defense, though, Micaiah can very easily get one-shotted by the longbow, so just bear that in mind. I say bear that in mind a lot, but, um... There are a lot of things that is important to bear in mind. I guess I should mention that some people like using the Draco Shield and Micaiah, but personally I think it just doesn't do much to help her durability anyway, and... I think it's kind of a waste overall. Yeah, her luck is just absurdly overkill. Uh, if she was in Path of Radiance, she might be one of the few characters who would actually like the luck cap being 40. I have no idea why the luck cap is at 40 in that game. It's just, it doesn't make, um, any sense. Could try and have Nolan and or Aaron get a little more experience here while my, um, NPCs are advancing towards the escape point. Let's just go ahead and do that. 
don't think I need to heal Nolan for this, although I really hope I don't eat my words, and uh, Soth or Aaron, but probably not Aaron, definitely needs to stand in front of this archer, mostly to block off this guy. Aaron does need a little bit of extra experience here, because I do plan on using him in part 3. You can actually shoot Micaiah, so I'll need to be aware of that. Like that. Zero! Nice one! That was probably a combination of support and biorhythm changing. Again, I don't like biorhythm in this game. Never have, never will. But it's, it's part of the reason why I don't like hard mode as well, because without a weapon triangle to mitigate it, hard mode is so reliant on getting lucky with biorhythm, and like I said earlier, if no one is in bad biorhythm at the start of a chapter, you might as well reset. I had no one in bad biorhythm at the start of 1-2, um, and uh, it didn't end well. Time for a little bit of cleanup here. This chapter has gone on for a little longer than um, I would, would have liked it to, but. Speaking of things I would like to, I would like Aaron to get the kill here, but I don't know if that's gonna actually happen. Yeah, even with the Iron Sword, Edward still does that, except the, uh, this guy will be I could go for. Yeah, I could try that. Yeah, Mikaya is at some um, best fire rhythm, so that would explain why the um, why the archer missed her last turn. And still not Wrath. Yeah, if Wrath was 50% like it was in Path of Radiance, Edward would be really, really good early in the game. It'd actually be pretty amazing if that was the case. But I'm not sure why you're back to having a 23 hit rate against me. Oh, I think Longbows have less accuracy at 3 range. That must be it. Because I know that um, the third tier form of snipers in this game have an ability that lets them shoot any bow at three range, but at a massive, well, not massive, but at a slight cost to accuracy. A slight cost that doesn't matter because their skill is so ridiculous. That's partly why, well, it's the main reason why uh, snipers are so good in this game. Aaron got at least a few kills here. And now we should be focusing fully on running, and in fact, Micaiah can now safely do direct target on the escape point. So because this isn't an escape chapter on easy mode, there the bonus experience for the NPCs is simply tied to them surviving, and I believe it's 200 bonus experience per survival, so they're worth a lot. Vulnerary up. I'm I'm wasting the vulnerary a lot, but I guess I can have soft leave. No escape quotes, sadly. Though admittedly, you never really saw Path of Readings as escape quotes all that much because uh, there are only two escape chapters in that entire game. Back in Path of Radiance, I would often mention Ready Dawn, and now I'm Ready Dawn, I'm going to be talking about Path of Radiance, well, hopefully not that much, but a little bit. I still find it interesting that Leanne and Mialucci have escape quotes in the game's data, but uh, they're not playable at all. Oh, right, you two, I forgot about you. Well, more experience for Nolan, I guess, and that's always a good thing. It's Nolaning time! I told you I wouldn't overuse that, so that's only one It's Nolaning time this chapter, and I think that'll be the quota. I get one It's Nolaning time per chapter, and that means I get to save it for the best possible moments. Okay, please tell me Nolan is okay against these two. I really hope he's okay against those two. Okay. 
Staff rank up, which is nice. Okay, let me just uh, go ahead and use Sacrifice on Aaron here. So I don't have to waste a healing item. And move Aaron back here. Just to hopefully take a bit of the pressure off Nolan. And uh, yeah, you were stuck on that thing for quite a while. Uh, should Edward... Yeah, I'm going to have Edward leave. And these two are going to get out of here. I mean, hopefully, yep, Perth had enough moves to leave. And you're attacking Aaron, which means Nolan's guaranteed to survive this turn, which is fine. You're doing a little more damage than I thought you would, but... Unless your compatriot over there somehow has four more strength than you, Aaron should be okay. Exactly the same strength. And yeah, no way you're doubling me with Seal Lances, so that's fine. And even more reinforcements. Yeah, no one would have been okay against you guys anyway, but at least only you have one. No, you don't have one less defense than you can Patriot. In fact, you both had the exact same stance. You're you have different affinity though, but other than that, you're close to each other. You know, I'm gonna have Aaron pull back here. And because neither of you have ranged weapons. Oh, I can't fully get Nolan out if I want to use Laura to heal, but let's just use Laura to heal. Can't fully heal Aaron though, because Laura is still only a level 2 priest. And Ileana should be getting out soon, Leonardo's gone. And uh, is there anyone I can sacrifice? Doesn't look like it. Almost done here. This does tend to be the first chapter that, to me, tends to take a while. Now, if you'd gained strength in your last level up, Aaron, you would be able to kill that guy. I don't think they're splitting up. Hmm. Let's try this. I, I know I'm running down my hand axe, but next chapter we won't be fighting very many ranged enemies. And we will also have access to the base, so we'll be able to buy more stuff. At least you get to get a level up before we go. Pretty good. I'll take that. Thankfully, Nolan doesn't have more speed than Edward at this point. Because that has happened to me in another, in another playthrough. When Nolan has more speed than Edward, that's usually a sign that your Edward is not all that worth investing in. Aaron might get another level up out of this, too. I'm not going to fight these other two soldiers. I'm just going to uh, get out of here. And you're gone. And you did what I thought you would do. In fact, you know what? I, I don't think I'm even going to... Now I'm going to kill you. So that means I waste one more turn. I might end up not even getting any experience for turns here, but I will be getting all the bonus experience for... Um, yeah, I actually have to have Aaron fight you. Otherwise he's not going to level up. But yeah, I will be getting the full bonus experience for everyone escaping, including the NPCs. Now can you get strength and defense? I shouldn't have said that. Oh, he got exactly strength and defense. Maybe I should have said that. Or rather, I'm glad I did say that. Okay, now we go. Nolan really needs new weapons. Surprised we haven't had any iron axes so far. But let's just quickly check. 50, yeah, he's not quite strong enough to use them without speed penalties. And yeah, you might as well heal to get a bit more experience. And next turn, we're gone. Well, hopefully Nolan has enough speed to get out of here. And let's just get some cheap sacrifice experience. Okay, good, no one can leave. Let's all go. And prison break is successful. 
Took longer than I thought it would, but I think we did that pretty well. That's usually the first chapter where I get a game over, so I'm glad that didn't happen that time. So, yet more blatant exposition dialogue, which is probably endemic of the normal mode script. Though I do think this line's not bad. Well, I mean, Ashnar didn't care about countries at all, so... And it's Daniel, so fun fact, I recently found out that in, if you look at everyone's Choose Your Legends results for just Tellius, Daniel was at the very bottom of the Radiant Dawn polls. I guess he's just very, very generic and unmemorable, so I can see why, but that was kind of funny. I'm really surprised that Lyra didn't get as low as she did, but I, I guess she has waifuism going for her to some people. So yeah, this is going to be kind of a theme of this game, about how nations are more people than just their rulers. Part 2 will really go into this theme. Hey, you're not looking creepy in this game! So yeah, I like Mustan's... Uh, Muston, I don't know how to pronounce his name, Muston I guess. I like his portrait in this game so much more than his Path of Radiance portrait, so... Yeah, he looks terrifying in that game, and I'm glad that uh, those days are gone. Hmm... This is a common theme in stories about dethroning an evil empire. There's usually a rightful king that you have to instill to the throne, but in this case, the interesting twist is that uh, it's the child of the previous evil ruler. But children rarely end up exactly like their parents. It's unfair to assume that Ashnard's child will be just as horrible as he was. And yeah, I like the parallels they're bringing up here. It's just interesting how they flip it on its head, like, I, that's one thing that I like about Radiant Dawn. I will admit its story isn't as well written as Path of Radiance, but it, it flips on its head a lot of tropes from Path of Radiance, like, in that game, Crimea was unambiguously good and Dayan was unambiguously evil, and you found the long-lost princess of Crimea and had to instill it to the throne. In this case, I just want to point out the Desert of Death is somewhere that, uh, it actually sounds like a Zelda location now that I think about it, but, um... Can I think of it? Has there been a Zelda location called the Desert of Death? Anyway, it sounds pretty ominous, but anyway, it's kind of cool how now Dayan are the good guys and you're fighting to save them from oppression. And I also love how it deconstructs that going into Dayan, smashing their country, might not have been the best solution. And uh, that kind of thing has happened in a lot of real life wars too. Even if you remove a dictator from power, that doesn't magically make the country better. Also, Nakaya needs to consult her smell bag for a moment. And once again, future visions always vague. I still got the turn bonus, I can't believe it. Also, yes, other units experience. Here is another major, major, major improvement in Radiant Dawn that I was talking about in Path of Radiance at several points. So any yellow units that fight, in this case get attacked, any experience they gain turns into bonus experience at the end of the chapter. So you don't need to worry about yellow units stealing your kills in this game, which is really awesome. I love that. So yeah, we get a lot of bonus experience out of having one everyone escape there. And with that, next time we'll follow Micaiah's smell bag intuition and see what awaits us in the deserts.